We've been kind of expecting a lot of changes for the iPad lineup for the past few years, and we've kind of gotten them. I'd say the largest update to the iPad we've ever got was that iPad Pro that was 12.9 inches. That was just monumental. It was just this enormous expansion to a touchscreen. But since then, nothing's changed terribly much. But I think now with the success of the iPhone 10, we're in for a real surprise. And by surprise, I really mean like, you know exactly what's going to happen. In fact, I'm probably the last YouTuber to talk about it. So many other Apple channels are talking about what from the iPhone 10 can be brought to the next generation iPad Pro. But I think the reason everyone's excited and the reason everyone's talking about it is yes, while we all know what's gonna happen, it's such a massive change and so many people I think are excited to buy into it. So first off, just like iPhone 10, removing the home button, adopting face ID. I don't think Apple's gonna try to put Touch ID into the display. A lot of people still ask about that. Even on future generations of iPhones, I still think that Apple's gonna say, no, Face ID is better. We're not going to implement a fingerprint reader. And first of all, I'm fine with that because I have psoriasis and my skin is all messy, which means that fingerprints are always changing for me. It never worked. Face ID is working great. And now, yeah, I can agree with a lot of people out there who are saying that when they open their iPad, they start to expect it to unlock when they just look at it. I agree with that. That's just a very logical way to approach it. And because it's an iPad, I feel like since it doesn't go in your pocket and it's more of like a tabletop thing or something that stays in your bag, Face ID will be even more applicable because whenever you use your iPad, it's typically pointed at you. Whereas our iPhone, maybe we rest on a table and use occasionally, whereas an iPad really should be pointed at you when you're using it. So I think Face ID is going to work just as well as it did on the iPhone. And of course, as you're seeing by this concept imagery made by a very generous and talented fan named Dale, you can check him out on Instagram and Twitter, links in the description, iPads will not require a notch of any kind. Since an iPhone has such, such thin bezels and because Face ID technology sensors are very, very small, they kind of needed that cutout at the top in order to make room for all these sensors. And we haven't figured out how to make those transparent yet. So that's why you have a notch on the iPhone 10. With this next generation iPad, a lot of people are calling the iPad Pro 10. I would almost prefer if they just called it iPad 10. We just got rid of the Pro in general, but because because this is rumored to have an insane A11X chip, which is an octa-core processor, and given that the Geekbench scores for the current iPhone and iPad processors are insanely through the roof, I'm sure this one is going to be on par with many high-end MacBook Pros. Hopefully that new processor will actually be taken advantage of, because while all of this new hardware I'm showing you is really, really cool, it's fun to finally see the same size bezel on an iPad again, which we haven't seen since like the iPad three and four, except now obviously at a much smaller level, I feel like your experience with the iPad is going to blend in with iOS even better than it did before. Now some concepts like everything Apple Pro predict that they'll curve the edges of the iPad and this is actually something people have wanted for a long time. Ever since the iPhone six, people have kind of been asking for the iPad to adopt kind of the curved corners that we see on iPhones. Now I actually don't think that's going to happen for one particular reason, that's the Apple Pencil. When drawing on a glass surface, it's already kind of slippery, but I think the reason Apple has stuck with kind of the flat top with a sharp edge on the iPad lineup is that when you have a curved edge glass and you have a curved unibody, it's easier for the Apple Pencil to slip off if you're coloring things on the edges. And I think it makes more sense that if you're drawing on this tablet that it's a solid surface and you don't have to worry about the pencil slipping when you're doing shading on corners or whatever. And I also think it's better for smart cover technology to close the screen if that glass is actually flat on the top, whereas if it was curved, you might not get get as secure of a locking mechanism. And I think the smart covers are probably the most popular accessory to go with the iPad because for one, they're not $100 and they do a pretty good job at letting it prop up and giving it a nice little coloring style. And that's why I think with our iPad Pro concept, the glass is going to remain flat on top. In terms of camera, I'm not anticipating that they'd put a dual camera on the iPad Pro. I think that there's not enough people taking pictures on the iPad for it to be worthy or Apple worthy of a dual camera. While I would love to see that, I just, can't help but know that most people are not taking pictures on their iPad. Lots more people are doing it on their phone. That's why Apple gives the iPhone 10 the dual camera. And for the sake of keeping the iPad Pro fairly affordable, not like super cheap at all, this will probably cost upwards of a thousand dollars. They'll still give it a very capable camera, probably the same camera we see in the regular iPhone 8, which means yes, 4K at 60 recording, optical image stabilization, and sadly, likely a camera bulge. Yeah, I think we have to assume that. Now there's a controversial one 
one that a lot of people want to see, but a lot of people don't think we'll see. And I actually think we do. That is adding a glass back to the iPad. Now there's several obvious cons with this design approach. For one, it makes the iPad noticeably heavier. A lot of people have mentioned that iPhone 8 Plus and 8 and the 10 are fairly heavy phones compared to their aluminum predecessors like the iPhone 7 and the 6S. Now I have kind of the unpopular belief that the current sized iPad is perfectly light enough. I don't find this thing heavy at all. And I would be totally okay if they went with a glass back in favor of adapting a new form of wireless charging, which I'll get into in just a second. Even if it makes the iPad Pro a little bit heavier, I don't think it will be unbearably heavy. And I'm kind of glad that in the more recent years, we've seen Apple move away from the Steve Jobs era of this must be thinner, this must always be lighter and start to think, well, people aren't really complaining about how heavy the iPad is or how heavy their iPhone is. Maybe we make them a little thicker, we make them a little bit heavier, but they add some more features and some more options. I would love to see that ideology brought to the iPad. And it would also just be great to have an iPhone with a glass back match my iPad with a glass back because in the end, everything's about looking the same and taking some good Instagram pics, right? That's all that matters. But about that wireless charging, of course, an iPad's battery is much, much larger than an iPhone's and we haven't really seen wireless charging brought to any kind of tablet on the market because you need quite a lot of wattage to charge a device this large. But what's about to come out, hopefully right before the iPad Pro 10, the Air Power Charging Mat, which theoretically is supposed to be able to charge multiple iPhones at the same time, your Apple Watch, your AirPods. Wouldn't it be cool if the secret hidden feature of Air Power is that because, you know, it's kind of a wider wireless charging mat, perhaps that wireless charging mat will be very capable at charging larger iOS devices like the iPad lineup. Now, of course, this would be a very expensive way of charging your device, but keep in mind, Apple doesn't care if they charge you $180 for a keyboard that you attach to your iPad. So the idea of spending, we don't know how much air power is, $150 on a wireless charging mat just for your iPad, I don't think it's too out there. Plus the iPad's battery life being at 10 hours plus, I think means that you don't have to keep it on the charger at all times. Meaning that if you want to charge your iPad with the air power mat, charges all the way up, you take it off, and then your air power mat can go back to charging your phone, watch, and AirPods because those should really be on the charger just at night. Your Apple Watch doesn't need to be charged every night. Definitely not your AirPods case, but it's cool that they can all work on one standard. And I also think this could lead to the future of Apple designing even wider and larger charging pads that will be able to charge, yeah, your iPad, your iPhone, everything, and hopefully someday even your MacBook. And a last minute touch that I'd like to add on all of my concepts of what I would like to see in future generation Apple products, a removed headphone jack. Yeah, I don't even care if you replace it with anything. I just don't think it should be there. Knew this video didn't have enough dislikes already. There we go. Just fix that problem. But yeah, a lot of people have questions about the display, like whether the iPad Pro 10 will be an OLED or an LCD. I think because Apple has adopted the ProMotion display with 120 hertz on here, they're probably not gonna go to OLED because as of right now, an OLED display with 120 hertz is yet to be done. It's yet to be possible. I think that OLED displays are too fragile and that refresh rate can cause a lot of issues with OLED. So people People just don't do it right now. And I'm sure MKBHD has a big award waiting for anyone who's able to adopt that technology first. But don't worry, curved corners are still possible on an LCD display. Some people seem to believe that when you make an LCD display, you can't have notches or curved corners. Not true, and the Essential Phone proves that. So I'm guessing that we're not going to get the OLED display on the iPad this year. It's going to stay LCD, but it's going to be the best LCD display we've ever seen because I'm sure colors are very vibrant. Now we have the rounded corners with the iPads around corners. So design wise, it's going to look dope. I don't think they'll go with a stainless steel body around the glass. That might just be too heavy or too expensive. They'll likely stick with the aluminum, but hey, if they provide options, how cool would that be? What if it was like a 10 and a half inch iPad gets the aluminum bumper, but the stainless steel bumper is limited to the 12.9 inch or vice versa or something. I guess this one is smaller. So perhaps it should have the heavier materials that are more durable or something. I don't know. Anyway, though, I'm really, really excited for this year's iPad Pro lineup. I wouldn't hold out too much for an iPad mini. I'm sorry. I know there's a lot of you out there. There's a ton of iPad mini fans, but sadly, I just don't think they're popular enough. And I think the plus model iPhones are killing the mini, especially this year when we get the 10 plus, which is six and a half inches. At that point, I think the iPad mini is about to die. But I will say if they do that iPad Pro 10 style that we're all imagining that you're seeing in this concept video, I could actually see myself going back to the 13 inch version of an iPad instead of 10 and a half. Because when I upgrade my products, I like drastic 
it changes. And if I just got the 10 and a half inch version, it would still be pretty cool, honestly. But getting all of those revolutionary iPad Pro 10 features in an even larger form factor, that's gonna be pretty cool. And I'm probably gonna get one in June. Very much looking forward to it. And you'll be probably watching a very different Talos of Tech by then. I wanna close off today's video with a special announcement. Project 2X, for those of you who don't know, is a top secret project that me and everyone at Taylosif has been working on for the past two months. is about to be unveiled over on our second channel, Taylosif Talks, live just tomorrow. And I know I usually do Taylosif Tech Streams on Tuesdays, but for this Tuesday in particular, you're actually going to get a video instead of a live stream on this channel. But over on Taylosif Talks, you'll get the unveiling live. So please go subscribe to that. Make sure you don't miss it. It's at 11 a.m. Pacific time, and it's going to change everything. It's going to change everything about Taylosif. Your tech videos are about to change, but I believe for the better. And I know I've been hyping it up a lot, but I really hope that the hype is worth it because I genuinely have worked so, so hard and spent a lot of money in my personal time and not sleeping a lot just to work on this project, which has all been for you guys. And I desperately, desperately hope that you're going to enjoy it. So this is your Apple Sheep here, and I'll see you in a very different one.